Hello, everybody. My name is Danji Kotapalli. I am the chief curator here at Indic Film Utsav. We are excited to be here uh, to announce the third Indic Film Utsav. So uh, a brief introduction about myself and then we'll go around the room. Uh, like I said, my name is Danji Kotapalli. I am based out of Los Angeles uh, here in California. And um, I have, I love films basically you know, in one line. So I worked in studios here in Hollywood. I volunteered at film festivals before and uh, which is why I'm here and I love it. So I, I like to, uh, you know, the next 30, 40 minutes, we'll spend talking about Indic film. So over to you, Christian. Hey, thanks, Donji. Um, just want to congratulate, I guess, the film festival. This is our third year, so that's very exciting. It's great to be uh, part of the team and on this journey. And again, my name is uh, Christian Frost. And I actually live in Salt Lake, uh, outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, I've been in the film industry down in Los Angeles in one way or another for the last 20 years in uh, marketing capacity. And um, I've had the opportunity to travel to India quite a few times and uh, I'm uh, always uh, looking for ways to improve my knowledge on the country and the culture as a whole. And so the film festival has really been an uh, excellent opportunity for me, and I would say as an outsider, to understand more about um, <clears throat> Indian society and all the complexities that are involved. But obviously, you know, um, our, our, the mission of the festival is always to, uh, to bring these positive stories. And so for me, it's been a real pleasure to uh, be involved and have an opportunity to watch all these uh, fabulous films and uh, learn about the filmmakers and the stories that they are so passionate, uh, uh, wanting to share. Um, in this case, for myself, I can take it, you know, personally and uh, well, selfishly. But it's been a great opportunity, and I look forward to this year's uh, festival for sure. And uh, again, I'm so happy to be here and be working with this fabulous team again. And with that, I will pass it off to Nikita. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Nikita Hatangari and I'm head of programming with Indica. Um, and just like everybody else on this panel and in the world, I love, love, love movies. Um, and I also had volunteered with uh, several film festivals over the years. So, so um, this is a, a great uh, place for me to be. And um, what I really love about Indica is that it's, it's an initiative to, to help uh, filmmakers across the world, either new filmmakers or uh, seasoned filmmakers to give us compelling stories that celebrate uh, the Indic and indigenous civilization and culture. So we provide that platform for them. Um, and so I really love my job and I love working with our, with our team. Um, my background is electrical engineering, but I'm also a filmmaker. So, um, I get to have some unique perspectives and I'm looking forward to, to this year's many wonderful films that will be submitted. And we just opened up. Um, so if you have a film, please go ahead and submit. And uh, handing it over to you, Pavan. Yes. Uh, hello everyone, Pavan Janakiram. Um, a senior programmer curator here at Indic. I've been uh, with Indic film festival for three years now. Um, I absolutely love films. I'm a short filmmaker and a uh, theater writer director uh, here in the Southern California region. Um, I live in Irvine, California. Um, looking forward to this year. Again, huge congratulations to Indic Pictures for uh, three in a row and here's to many, many more. Um, so excited and we have received some phenomenal content over the last three years. Um, and met some amazing filmmakers. And that's, that's the reason why we do this, um, is to bring quality cinema um, out to the film festival stage for, um, for filmmakers to showcase their talent and for us to see good movies. Excited to be here. Thank you. Over back to Danji. Hey, that was wonderful. Thank you uh, for introducing yourself. So what uh, we're gonna do today is basically um, the goal is to announce the dates for the third Indic film itself. 
and also talk about the festival and then a little bit provide some data points as a, as a call, I guess. And of course, we'll also talk about, uh, you know, some experiences that all of us have treasured for the past two years. Um, so the, I'm happy to announce that uh, the third Indic film itself is going to happen uh, on, it's a four day, ours is a four day festival. So the dates are November 10th to November 13th. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, four day event. Ours is an ours is uh, uh, is an OTT online global twenty four by seven festival. That's the mouthful. So uh, we are online. Uh, our festival is online, um, and we are uh, so our films will be available twenty four by seven on those four days. So wherever you are in the world, whatever time. 2 a.m. in the morning is when you get a chance to watch the film. It's available to you. So we are very different from other festivals, which are in-person festivals. So, for example, if there's a festival here in Los Angeles or there's one in Mumbai, people in Mumbai can go. But people in Los Angeles cannot go to Mumbai, right? But okay. So therefore, our festival is unique in that sense. It caters to audiences all over the world. And it shows. We had 43,000 unique views last year wow unique views so that means 43000 people uh watched our films uh, and they were at from least, all over the world at least right at least yeah yeah i mean uh, so that's a, when i say unique views i'm talking about a very specific unique login right we can we are able to track all that uh so that's a, that's the uh, wonderful part about the festival the way we are set up um, and I'd like to talk about uh, being passed on to Nikita to, to talk a little bit about the philosophy behind our festival. Why, why do we do this? Uh, and, and what kind of films do we show? So we're, you know, again, we are, we are a, a platform for filmmakers who are either uh, new filmmakers or, or, or very seasoned filmmakers to, to bring stories that are of the Indic culture and civilization. But there is one difference between what we do and what many other film festivals do, and that is to bring positive message films. Um, and we've had some incredible submissions in the last two years that we, we unfortunately could not put into our programming because they were negative message films. Um, so, you know, we, we feel that the world already has enough problems and, um, we just want people to come and watch movies that inspire them, make them feel uplifted, happy. Um, and when you make uplifting films, it also helps people to come together as a community rather than being angry with, with one another. So I think that's one of the best things about Indic Film Utsa. Um, and we do not accept films that, that are negative in any way or that show um, any derogatory uh, comments or or um, stories about any faith or community or gender. So I think I think that's 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 what really puts us apart from the rest. Yep. In fact, um, I'd like to add to what Peter said. And, and so, like like, and, and this has to do with the previous point that I was making, which is ours is a global online festival. So what happens uh, in a regular festival, in person festival, you know? You would go to the theater, you would buy a ticket and sit in the theater and watch the film. So you could choose what film you want to watch. Uh, and uh, so at home, <laughs> that's not the case. So you're in the living room, you're watching a movie, and you have your kids, your family all around. Uh, they may not be watching the film that you're watching, but they're hanging around. And you don't want a film that is that has uh, you know anything that's objectionable. For a family view, right? So, so that's another driver for why we really work hard. In fact, Nikita's team, which includes uh, Pavan, uh, work really hard. In fact, the first year we had 800 plus films that were submitted. They had to watch something like I think we calculated it something like some some ridiculous amount of hours of time to watch all those films to pick the ones 
and now uh, that are that are suitable for family viewing. What what that what does that mean? Suppose you skip to the film, and then you miss one little bit, and that little bit is the problematic piece. We're done, right? Yeah. So they had to literally watch every single minute of every film to be every film that got selected to 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 make sure that they are suitable. So we had to add uh, add to that. And, uh, and 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 if I may interrupt for a second, even though we have a programming team. What is really nice about Indic Film Utsav is that all of us uh, help each other. So it, it, it wasn't just programming team, but the entire team of uh, Indic films um, actually helped to watch the films because we had such a massive number of submissions that all of us uh, did it together. So so I really I really like that about our festival. Really? That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think um, it's, a, it's a very small festival. Uh, it's a it's very specific uh, focus. Um, we, call, we call ourselves Indic film itself. So there's a lot of Indicness about this festival. So we focus on the Indic values, the Indic civilization values. And also the, more other, the other important thing is that we are really uh, showcasing India to a global audience. So that's what we do, right? Yeah. Um, because the fact that we are a global festival, because we're an online festival, people can watch this festival from anywhere in the world, and anybody can watch it. It's not just Indians, because it's not that our festival has a registration and then you have to register yourself, and then we allow you to I, I watch it. It's not like Netflix. It's open to the internet. So that means anybody in the world, anywhere, from Malaysia, from Middle East, from uh, Europe, from uh, North America, South America, Africa, any part of the world, you can, anybody can watch it. So that's the uniqueness. Hey, Pawan, I wanted to uh, ask you, uh, were there films that you really enjoyed watching? Uh, you watched hundreds of them. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but are there a few that you really want to, you feel that touched you? And uh, you'd like yes. to- Yes. Yeah. Yes, certainly. Um... So you're right, Danji, 800 odd films <clears throat> year one was a sheer humbling experience for us, uh, the programming team. We um, did not expect that scale and it, and it introduced to us the sheer scale of, of how much talent is out there and how many filmmakers are um, looking to um, express themselves and, and, and their voices. Um, and their communities. I mean, most of these films, and I'm going to talk about two of them um, come to my mind right now. Um, they, they represented, um, and, and I think that, that was the beautiful thing about these two films that I'm going to talk about. The first is, uh, you know, the, it's called Court Part Weaving. Um, it is from the uh, tribal textile space. Um, inside India. Um, this is uh, on the Eastern Ghats, nestled amongst mountains and, and thick jungles and rainforests. Um, there are communities, there are tribal communities that weave textiles. And this is a dying art. Um, it, is, it is a process of weaving cloth, um, making garments from, in an organic process that involves at least 12 comprehensive manual steps. And the documentary that I'm talking about captures these steps. And the makers of these textiles, the people of these villages speak freely, openly about how proud they are and how nicely they do this work and how dedicated and committed they are every year. Um, not looking for monetary gains, not necessarily going after the commerce aspect of it primarily only. Uh, but just for the love of the art, and that impacted my uh, that impacted me in a deep sense. In that, that is the true reason to do film. I mean, if you it, it, uh, documentary filmmakers, I have a lot of respect for, um, and to bring out something like this, I would have never known about these communities if not for something like this. And uh, post that, my wife and I went out and started to research this textile and we shared this with friends and family and uh, 
We also got an opportunity, uh, Ranji, after the festival last year, uh, meet the maker uh, in one of our panels here. And that was, that was a great experience and humbling. So the word spreads, films work, documentaries reach. And, um, and that was what I um, saw from that experience of mine. Um, the second feature, uh, also a documentary in this case, is uh, called The Lost Art of Seasoning. Um, yeah, this is, a um, yeah, this, this, this is a story from uh, the Northeast uh, region of India where this young uh, boy who has um, um, left India for higher education, gone out, goes back and then starts to explore his roots and where this lost art of seasoning has been lost, right? I mean, when was it lost? Why did we give up? And, and seasoning uh, specifically in this case is salt. So there was a process, there was a method in which his community, his ancestors made salt in the forests. They lived there in those villages back then. And then there was a, um, uh, a process where they would go out deep into the forest capture, go to this well, pick up water from this specific well, and then put it through um, heating and cooling um, and, and against all the elements of nature, uh, you know, um, and still manage to produce salt in a stipulated number of days, I think 28 days or something around a month or so. Um, and, and that, that just, just the diligence around how they stick to the task and why they believe in that process and why it should not be lost, and how strong they are in their convictions of this of this seasoning, um, is, is was was inspiring to watch. The filmmaking aspect is one thing, but I think when filmmaking takes the backseat and you start to empathize and appreciate what is being shown, then that's the true success of filmmaking, right? I mean, if I'm focused on sound and um, light and where it is coming from, and I can see all that, then maybe maybe not. But um, the maker um, did a phenomenal job in, um, in, in getting us past that and then showing us his community and showing us his tradition. So Which yeah. Which part um, of uh, the country is it? Was it it's Northeast, it's, it's, it's Northeast, yeah. It's um, yeah, the makers are Abo Arangam um, and uh, um, the, uh, the producer's name and the researcher's name is Pongro Wangsu. Um, so Abo Arangam is the maker. And for court part waving, uh, the director and maker is Biswanath Rath. Um, I do always like to highlight the maker's names because it's it's not easy work. <laughs> I know. Um, so yeah, those two would be nice. my favorite films, Danji. That I think, uh, and more than saying favorite, I'd like to think most impactful to me. I, I loved a lot of films, uh, but these two uh, really struck a chord. Oh. So I just want to take a quick minute to uh, you know, keep uh, sharing some information about the upcoming festival. So uh, uh, a Film Freeway is how you submit a film. And Film Freeway is open. You know, we are open for submissions right now. <clears throat> the dates are that um, we have an early bird. So the early bird, you can submit film without a fee, without a submission fee. So the early bird is open right now. It goes on till... 25th of July. So you have time on the 25th of July to submit a film without a fee. After that, you can still submit a film and we encourage you to do that, but it's a very small fee in terms of, of submitting the film. And that's very small. It's hardly uh, a lot of money. It's tiny. Uh, but that, uh, that uh, uh, continues uh, you have the ability to submit films uh, until end of uh, August, which is actually nine September second is the last day for submissions. So you have time between now and September second to submit a film. But if you take take of the early bird, then you can do it right away until July twenty fifth. After that, there's a small fee. Okay. So shall I turn it over to Christian then? You know, Christian, do you have? I, I mean, Christian, I know. I mean, you, 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 you have uh, been associated with this festival right from day one, right from the time we started thinking about it. So uh, I know, you know, you have a couple of films that you'd like to talk about, but I wanted to ask you, you know, what do you think about a 
about Indic film books. I you, you have a lot of experience with festivals. You have you know been been festivals. You also worked in you know major studios here in the Hollywood area. So just wanted to get your thoughts. Um, it's it's been it's been a, a real eye opener, I think, for me. Um, I would consider myself an outsider because I'm uh, I didn't grow up in India. I didn't have a lot of friends from India growing up, and so I didn't really start connecting with um, the culture and people just through my the natural processes of being introduced to India through food through maybe school reports and things. Uh, back in the day, I remember my first real contact with India was having to do uh, a doctor uh, doing a report in junior high school on the film Gandhi when it came out. And so that was really one of the first um, experiences that I had of seeing India through a lens, obviously through, you know, um, uh, Richard Attenborough, you know, in terms and the subject matter of Gandhi and who that individual was and um, his role within the history of India, you know, and obviously British and self rule and things like that. But that's it. Still took me years until I started to understand even how that film, you know, where its place was within Indian history. So as I started working in the film industry and then uh, kind of the interest in India and then entertainment came together, all of a sudden that's where my um, first step uh, touching the Indian film industry uh, started to begin where I was uh, um, introduced to, you know, Hindi films, Bollywood films. And then going, oh my gosh, what, what is this? This is like, I feel like I'm on a different planet, you know, and then uh, starting to watch all those and then somebody telling me, hey, we're you know, the India's the largest film industry in the world. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, I'm in LA, LA is the biggest film industry, and, you know, being humbled, that, uh, you know, no, that's not the case and realizing that there was a whole nother form of, um, you know, cinema in the world and then watching that. And then again, the natural progression through there is that you realize that there's an independent uh, filmmaking industry in India. And then, you know, whether it's uh, back in the olden days with, you know, Satyajit Jaray and his films and, um, and then being introduced to that. And then even the next layer of actually starting to attend uh, festivals in the U.S. that then kind of touch on um, the independent filmmakers and opening up a whole nother world of, you know, short films, documentaries, things that I just really never had access to through, you know, normal channels here in the U.S. So um, the Indic film Utsav really kind of um, opened another door into films and subject matters in a way that I could enjoy them again, with myself, my family, my own personal values and things that I look for in, uh, you know, in cinema and entertainment. So having been able, you know, I think the amazing thing about this film festival is that there's, you know, the programming team, you know, Nikita and Pavan, I mean, the, the, uh, um, the films that they select are just really high quality. I mean, they have just an enormous task getting us you know to the point where we can actually present you know these amazing films because they have to sift and look and decide through so many um so many great uh so many great films and so when we get to that place you know i'm able to kind of you know even though we all do i mean i really don't do that much uh in terms of uh some of the early viewing sifting through but you know there's there's just so many great ones, but they are really the ones that kind of are able to hone it down to ones that really kind of fit, you know, our our goals and our uh, our um, our our uh, you know within the themes of the festival. So, having said that, um, there's just so many great films that I enjoy um, uh, watching. A couple of them are from our first year. Two of them are from our first year, and one of them are from it's from last year. But one of the great opportunities that I have in my role as filmmaker liaison is being able to talk to a lot of the actual filmmakers. So even though the films themselves, there's so many great ones and it's really hard for me to decide. And I know that 
Uh, Pavan talked about a couple uh, that he enjoyed, which I think are great. I know Nikita has some that she'll probably read, and I'll, I'll probably agree with that. But some of these ones, these first two ones are ones that um, um, I thought were interesting because there was a backstory to the film being made themselves. And so the first two films uh, that I, I just wanted to kind of brief uh, touch on from our first year is um, a children's short um, called The Umbrella. Now, The Umbrella was a film that came from, I didn't even know, I had to look it up, but it was from uh, Manipur, which was in the Northeast part of the country. And, uh, and for those that don't know, it gets closer to the Chinese border. And so there's a lot of, uh, you know, Chinese influence within, you know, uh, I think maybe Tibetan or that kind of area of the, of the world. And so I had no idea what it looked like, you know, um, that they even spoke a different language there. And so uh, having watched this, it's a very simple film, um, very touching. Uh, the actors in there are amazing, the young man and uh, that I was very impressed with. And uh, Rakesh, um, let me how to say his last name, Moriantham. Them. Hopefully I'm saying that right, Rakesh. If you do, you can send me a <laughs> send me a message. Um, and uh, hearing about his story about how he uh, chose um, a young actor in the kind of the process of filming with uh, children, and that actually I just want to kind of dovetail into the other film because the other one uh, again had a similar um, uh, talent involved was um, a film called The Flowers of Cassia, Fistula, and Mango, which was another uh, great film from that same year. But this film was actually from a filmmaker, uh, Ivy Lash, who was down in Kerala. And again, Kerala, I knew a little bit about. And, uh, but what was great about this, this particular film is that there was a lot of youth involved in him shooting. And uh, the subject matters you know, around uh, adolescence, during the festival times. And uh, just for me, again, it's a doorway into uh, something that I know nothing about in terms of festivals and family life and what goes on. Um, but I could relate to a lot of it because as a father of kids, you know, festival time, kids are excited. There's a lot of going on, there's a lot of fun. You know, there's a lot of uh, families are together. And so, um, so even though both of those are excellent films, um, uh, we had a uh, um, we had a, a discussion panel that year where uh, both of those filmmakers were involved. The subject matter was actually filming with uh, filming with kids, and so what was great about that was that we found out, you know, first of all, filmmaking in general is very difficult. A lot of filmmakers here have experienced, you know, making films and the amount of hard work and you know, really scraping and pushing and forcing these projects and the reality that even filming with children just raises the difficulty <laughs> level yes. uh, in terms of, uh, you know, controlling, I mean, if, if controlling these, uh, these uh, little body, little bodies with a lot of energy and, you know, <laughs> excitement and uh, focus. And uh, for me, it was really interesting to hear how both filmmakers, um, um, were able to come to their projects almost in the same way. They realized that uh, they had to have a lot of patience shooting with, uh, shooting with kids. Um, they had to be able to communicate in a way that kept the kids, you know, um, excited and engaged. And as a, as a, you know, as a father with kids, you know, we all have to kind of do the same thing, getting kids to do homework, trying to get your kids to focus on anything. So it was just, I was able to like relate and just uh, really enjoy both of those filmmakers, their processes uh, on, on shooting with kids and then how that ended up um, presenting itself in a, you know, on the screen. And you really don't, you you see the films and you just, you don't think about that. You don't realize uh, that segment in the filmmaking process. And these guys end up, you know, they might, some of, you know, obviously with Rakesh, he's done some, you know, some shorts and things like that, but he hasn't been doing it for years. Abilash, he's been doing it for a, li a little longer. 
but you realize that both of them, where they are in their careers, um, you know, they're honing that crap. They're honing that ability and all those experiences that they have lend themselves in, onto the next projects and they just become better and better and better. Now, backing up from this, that's why the festival is great because it gives these guys the opportunity to showcase their work in a global, uh, you know, global environment, not just uh, introducing people like myself uh, to subject matters that I'm not really familiar with uh, through, their, through their perspectives. But it helps them, um, you know, garner the uh, the um, the awareness of who they are as filmmakers, so they can continue the, what they love to do. Now, a lot of these guys, they do things on the side. They're teachers. They're you know, they have jobs, and so all these you know, all these filmmakers, they do things on the side to um, kind of uh, pay the bills, like it, until they can get to that point where they can do these things full time, as if that's you know what they choose. So, I would say those are the two uh, films. I mean, I'll touch on another one later on, but those are as a filmmaker liaison, I really have the opportunity to connect with filmmakers and be able to share their stories within the Indic platform here in the festival. And so that's really, that's really what I enjoy doing and getting to know these uh, filmmakers and just finding out who they are as individuals and how uh, that translates to what we end up eventually seeing on the screen within our amazing festival. So. Hopefully, it was a little long-winded. Apologize, but hopefully that uh, answers what you're no, asking. It was very, it, 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 so. Yeah, it was very uh, insightful, you know, and uh, it provides uh, a perspective, you know, in terms of how uh, somebody who's who's probably did grow up with the environment, you know, coming from outside, you know, looking at it, and then what what it does, you know, in terms of adding value to a perspective or you know sharpening a point of view or clarifying something, you know, in terms of any about a different culture. You know, very, very thanks for uh, for sharing that question. Hey Danji, just for just to clarify, uh, you asked me about Lost Art. Um, it's from the region of Chasa uh, and it's in Odisha, the hills of Odisha. So just to clarify that, yeah. Oh, great. Wonderful. So let me go over to uh, our uh, you know, tireless heroine of Indic film itself, Nikita. <laughs> so Nikita uh, is our uh, head of programming and uh, she has the envious task of having to go through uh, hundreds of films and act, I mean, with her team and then come up with, um, you know, uh, select the ones that are uh, really, really important or really uh, suitable for our our festival and its goals and objectives and all that. So Nikita has uh, stated um, enormous capability in that space. You know, in the past two years, for many more years before that, um, and uh, and she's the she's the person who looks at every film and she's. Uh, uh, she's very particular about that. Uh, so I, I, I'm sure, you know, looking forward to uh, your your thoughts on the festival as well as, uh, you know, films that, uh, you know, impressed you more than the others. I'll put that way. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, um, one of the hardest things is, and, and Danji hasn't mentioned this before, that if it were up to me, I'd probably have like a festival with 200 films in it because <laughs> I like all the films. And just just before we make the final selection, there's always a really heated discussion because everyone's like, you can't have that many films, you know that, but it's so hard for me to, to have to say no. Um, but yeah, I think uh, we try to keep a variety of films, you know, some humorous films, um, films that are more serious, films that reflect issues in society. Um, one of the films that that really stood out for me um, in the first year was a film called Protyush, made by Arindam Barua. And this is an Assamese film. It's a short film. And Protyush means the ushering um, of the crack of dawn. 
And this is a women empowerment film. It's it's set uh, in rural India. And, you know, as of the 2020 census, still 60, more than 67% of India's 1.4 billion population is rural. So it is nice to see films that are based uh, in, in villages because that's where most of our population is. So this, this is a film uh, that's in a, in a village and it's about a poverty uh, stricken family and the untimely death of the husband who is the only breadwinner. And suddenly now this uh, woman and her children, uh, you know, they're gonna have to fend for themselves and how she goes against society and family and expectations and she stands up for herself and um, you know she starts to to run the family and it's a short film and it's so beautifully portrayed um, and one of the things that I really loved about the film is one technical aspect that was used very creatively and that was the use of black and white in color um, and when he talks about the ushering of the crack of dawn of how he goes from black and white into color at the moment of her, this epiphany that I don't care what society says, I need to do this for my family. And she stands up and I thought that was so beautifully done. Um, it's, it's, it's a wonderful film if you ever get a chance to watch it at some festival. Um, it has gone into many, many festivals. So, um, and talking about rural India, another film that I loved was Taj Mahal that came out last year. It's a feature film by Niaz Majumdar. And uh, what I really, really liked about this film is that it is an integration of different faiths and communities. Um, it's about a little boy who, who has fallen in love with a goat. And uh, it's the season of Eid. So you can already see the conflict that's that's there, but it's so beautifully handled, and um, and the ending was was a very surprise but wonderful, inspiring, uplifting ending, and it also happened to win the jury award at our festival last year. And then, of course, comedy is everyone's favorite, and one of my favorite funniest films came out last year. It's called Balcony, uh, and it's uh, a film by Ashish Nehra. And this film was, uh, you know, the basis of this film is about COVID times. Nobody could go anywhere. <laughs> We're stuck at home. But, you know, in India, if, you, if you've ever been to a community where people live in flats or chows, you will see that you don't have to go to each other's houses to make friends. You can just hang out in your balcony or you can hang out just in the in the alley or in the hallway and you can have your friends and even little get togethers there. So this was really lovely because these people are suffering uh, during the pandemic and they're stuck at home. But these two gentlemen, how they come out on the balcony and they become friends. And it was hilarious. And um, it's something that I think everyone could relate to. So these are some of the films that uh, stood out for me. Um, although, so, I mean, we, we could talk all day about all I know. we like. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How about you, Danji? Hmm. he's frozen, right? He froze. <laughs> <laughs> Um, actually, I could probably just pick up on uh, one of the films, other films that I didn't actually talk about. Um, yeah. I know everyone shared three. So I wanted to share the last one that I really like was actually last year in 2001. It was a short film named uh, Sekandi. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, which was uh, really interesting because, um, again, coming from the U.S., I was not familiar with this uh, part of society in India, in the Hijra. And so this was really, it, it, really kind of an eye opener. Uh, for me, I actually lived in the South Pacific in in a country for, uh, for a while, uh, Western Samoa in the South Pacific, and they actually have a similar type of uh, part of society that's similar to to this uh, social demographic uh, within India. 
But what I thought was, <coughs> excuse me, what was really interesting about this film that it was beautifully shot as well, but it, it incorporated mythology um, of, uh, of, of uh, uh, you know, uh, and I, I don't even know really how to explain Nikita, you probably could do a little better job of that in terms of, um, I guess, how the group is thought of within the mythology context. I guess that might be the best way of kind of describing maybe what that is. But as a particular individual kind of finds their place within um, within society. And so there's these flashbacks that go back into um, kind of the, I think, is it the Mahabharata or the Rig Veda? I'm not sure which uh, text that it's actually, I uh, can't recall what text that it's uh, pulling from. But it, as he's going through this process of figuring out um, who uh, you know who they are as an individual, there's these flashbacks that go back into the mythology, and how they do that's really interesting and really beautiful. And so that was one of the films that also really impressed me, just in terms from a skill level. Um, and the writing is very good; it's very tight, and it's just really, really well made. Um, so that was one of the things that, um, I mean, again, there was a lot of films, but this really, again, has to go back to, I mean, uh, filmmakers. And this particular filmmaker, um, Sahil, uh, he went to film school. He, you know, he was uh, taught really, really well in terms of um, um, just the skill set of learning, you know, filmmaking from a school environment and being able to take all of that knowledge and know-how and probably other people, other film, you know, other film, uh, skilled work, you know, skilled, skilled filmmakers that they all, you know, met, probably met in school and were able to make something just really fantastic just from a, a craftsman perspective that was very, just a really, really well-made film. So just wanted to put that one out there as well. Hey, thanks, thanks, you. thank you, Richard. Hey, sorry about that glitch that we had just a few minutes. Got dropped off. Um, so we are almost at the end of uh, our session. We have a few more minutes, um, and um, uh, I, I just wanted to mention one thing, which is our besides our competitive section, we also have a non-competitive section, which is the opening night film, the closing night film, right? So these are not part of the competition, by the way. Ours is a competitive festival. So every category, there are pri there's prize money involved. So we give out uh, pretty decent uh, you know, prize money. For, the, for example, the, the best uh, film, feature film, and best documentary get one lakh rupees uh, as the prize money. So, uh, it's a, it, so we are one of the few festivals that have prize money. So yes. you should definitely consider that. So I just wanted to uh, mention that we had, uh, first year we had Anandi Gopal, uh, uh, as as an opening night film, and it, it's a great film. So, I mean, this year, last year, we had Stella Puran, for example, Akshay Indigo's uh, Stella Puran as a closing night film. In fact, we tried to program Stella Puran in the first year, but we couldn't for some reasons. Uh, but then, you know, we were able to do that, even though the 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 time frame for competitive section had elapsed for that film. Uh, but we were still able to program it as a closing night film. So we have some really interesting opening and closing night films that we get to watch at our festival. So with that, uh, we're almost uh, at the last minute uh, of our panel discussion today. Anything else? Uh, 30 seconds, uh, Christian, Nikita, Pawan, like share. Just um, looking forward to this year. That's it, yeah, excited. <laughs> And, and we accept films in all different languages. In fact, last year we had a film in Sanskrit. Yes. Punya Koti. So uh, definitely, and it was also an animated film. So documentary animation, short films, funny films, any language, as long as it has a positive message and it has some connection with the Indic civilization. And I think my last message, and this would be going to the back to the filmmakers, if there is somebody out there that's made a short film and you're just scared about putting it out into the world, you know, go ahead and submit your film. You know, peep, you know, I'm sure you're probably nervous. You're not sure what people will think, 
but you know, I'm sure that uh, if you put your heart and mind and your, you know, your passion into it, that people are wanting are going to want to see it. So please share with us, you know, your your films for those who are probably just uh, beginning on the filmmaker's path, because uh, you know, like I said, you need support, and we're here to support you for those, uh, you know, amazing films that fall within, um, you know the goals of the festival. So look forward to uh, this year and again, meeting with all the new filmmakers that we're gonna get the chance to uh, meet and uh, root on this year. So yes. thank you. Thank you everybody. So one last uh, 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 thing to share is that Indic Film Utsav is part of Indica Pictures. Indica Pictures, we also do something called the Indica Culture Photography Grant, which is underway. Phase three is going on where the coffee table book is going to get produced. And then Indica Pictures is part of Indica, which is a larger organization, which has a lot of platforms across yoga, Vedanta, Advaita, uh, books, uh, cultural entrepreneurial, uh, entrepreneurial entrepreneurism, and hold on, you should check it out. Indica.in is the website. Check it out. We do a lot of stuff. A lot of interesting stuff. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll let you go. Thanks, Nikita. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, Kalan. We'll catch up right after Thank this. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.